Steve here, and uh, I don't have my special googly eye light tonight that's oftentimes behind the computer. That allows me to get better, you know, coloration. <laughs> Makes you look healthier, I guess. So, first of all, I want to start off by... Um, Expressing my appreciation for all the wonderful things that um, many of you have um, written to me through comments. Um, we're real. We're, I, I mean, I don't know that <laughs> the people that wrote the comments were real, but they felt really real. And so I'm just guessing that they are, actually are real people who write really wonderful comments that are really thought provoking and they've really thought about what I've said and then they write something really eloquent back although random and sometimes exploring all sorts of space you are my people <laughs> just exploring space so I just want to put a plug in for um, a post that I wrote today um of a quote from uh, Carl Jung. And I just feel like it's such a good quote for these times right now. And uh, yeah, there's just, oops, something made noises. Maybe it was like um, one of the chords or something slid down or some such thing. So I've got to remember that I have this thing in my ear now so that um, my voice comes through clearer and better possibly. Um, I, I appreciate the person that said, I really want to hear what you say. And that's always like thumbs up or two thumbs up. Um, I really have missed um, my being able to articulate my thoughts about everything um, since I got um, removed from uh, uh, the uh, another social site for expressing my views on um, basic, basically um, the value of taking advice from drug companies, <laughs> basically, drug dealers. I would say, oops, I didn't mean to say drug companies. I just, I meant to say drug dealers, which is the same thing. It's basically dealers of drugs and the companies that produce them. So um, anyway, I think I said enough of that and we'll hope that that just kind of goes right through the, the scanner. <laughs> and, um, oh, I really appreciate um and I'll get to know you by name at some point. NXADTC248, um, number six. Uh, I'll begin to remember, remember your names. Um, but I really appreciated the comment of the person that said that, um, that I, I, that I might have said something like, um, I, I don't mind apologizing as long as I can keep laughing. <laughs> that was a good, that was a good comment. I liked it very much. So thank you very much for making that comment. And, and thank you to all the new subscribers. Um, you know, my intention wasn't numbers. My intention was consciousness. My intention was healing. My intention was taking my gift and, and giving it to the world. That's, that's my intention. That's what I'm doing. And it seems to be getting, getting to a lot of places in the world. So I, um, I, I won't, well, because I, oh, I think it, I'm going to just say in case she watches more videos, um, cause I love your name and I probably won't even say it correctly, but still I'm going to give it a try. Um, I really love Fiona from Scotland, <laughs> who I think was who pointed out that I had written on the dollar 
that I paid myself for a tarot reading. We got a bit of flack over that, but that's okay. We got a lot of laughs over the flack we got for getting paid because it's against gypsy law or something. But anyway, um, Fiona was sharp enough and kind enough to point out that I had written 20, 25, or just 25 on the, on the dollar. And that, so I didn't actually get paid. But no, it's kind of like a blank, not a blank check, but a post-dated check. So this was a post-dated dollar. So I actually did get paid because I had the dollar. Of course, I had the dollar before I gave it to myself, but then I had the dollar after I gave it to myself. And I can still use it even though it said 25 on it. But I'm very focused on 2025 because that's March 23rd, 2025 is when we complete this 28-year cleansing program, <laughs> which I'm really looking forward to be done with. I've been aware of it since 1997 when Abraham and I told me that the earth was going to be going through a cleansing and it was going to last 28 years. And I immediately started calculating when that was going to be. And really the physical cleansing from 97 to 2004, I didn't, I, I found that was not that difficult to me. The mental cleansing from 2004 to 2011 11 was pretty intense, and that was also the time I began having a, well, that period of time that I had the hot doors really helping me um, really change my mind and change my thoughts and change my words. So I wasn't cr expressing words, creating things that I didn't want to have happen and saying things about myself that weren't useful. So they really were helpful. In that period of time and um, 2011 to 12 2018 the emotional cleansing that was pretty that was pretty powerful but still it wasn't overly uh, maybe some of those yeah maybe some of those dark nights dark nights of the soul were kind of just concerning but coming out on the other side of a dark night of the soul I always felt a whole lot better so I was like oh that was good when I was in it, I was like, oh, this is not good. But once you come through it, you go, oh, that, that was very good. I'm really glad I did that. And that's true of a lot of things. We're really glad we did them once they're over. Okay. And then the last seven years from 2018 to 2025 involved the spiritual cleansing. And that's the part we're in right now. And we only have 11 months of that left to go. So we can do this. As long as we keep keep a sense of humor about the world and 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 what people are saying is happening and accept that these constructs such as um, global warming or global cooling or an ice age cometh. <laughs> All of those things, you know, we'll find out, you know, but a lot of those things um, are really making use of the construct, which is creation. It's something that's made up. Reality is a construct. And a lot of people make use of the fact that people can get motivated through fear. So if you ever feel like I'm doing that, um, point it out to me because it's not my intention to motivate anybody through making them afraid. Um, I'm working on not being afraid myself. I've been uh, not, um, I lived in panic up until 2011 and I really resolved it in 2011. So I'm, I'm not uh, a person that lives in panic anymore. Um, I do experience uh, the fear of the field and I'm grounding the fear, the grief and the anger uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm used to it. It just doesn't um, cause me any harm. Um, I'm watched over pretty carefully by some 
really lovely beings who are at a very high level of um, energetics and uh, they they care about me and when I when they had me set up the world healing field in end of January 2020 they told me they wanted me to set up a field to ground the energies of disturbance that were going to be coming on strong and I set that field up and after a few days of grounding the disturbance of the world I said I'm going to die I'm going to die and they said no you're not and they said you're very important to us and you're bringing you're doing things that are very useful to us and so we're not going to let you die and we won't give you an assignment that would cause you to die. Although this assignment will cause you to grow. And that it has. So that's probably uh, another five to ten minute um, introduction to a tarot reading. Which hopefully won't be a long tarot reading. I think I'm beginning to realize that these uh, 36 minute videos are really useful to one or two people actually watch the whole thing. And me, because I watch them. I don't care. I just watched one. Oh, and a little hint for you who are watching. I just watched a video I think I made on Tuesday. I'm pretty sure it was made on Tuesday. And it was a video of me um, processing a real deep triggering and really clearing most of the energy of it in an hour, which is better than the previous week's seven days of clearing a triggering. So seven days to an hour, and it was a big triggering, and I made a video of it. So it's 109, so 69 minutes of um, releasing a major triggering. So it's really useful to watch it. I talk about a lot of things that I find interesting about how I got to where I am in my life, but really working on, yeah, really doing a lot of work in that 69 minutes. Because it has a little bit of personal um, information that I don't want just going out into the world necessarily, because I processed some stuff about some um, about some individuals. So I don't want to necessarily watching it. Although if they ended up watching it, I'd be fine with it because I feel real clear about the information that I gave out. But I may want to just deal with some of the things once the energetics are clear, more clear. I may want to deal with the things um, more directly than by, you know, the information showing up on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so anyway, what I'm offering is any of you that have written really nice comments and would like to see, uh, watch a, a unpublished video of me processing some really intense energies. Um, I don't, I don't know how it's done yet. Maybe you can tell me, but in a comment session to this video, say, I'd really like to see that video and I'll send you a, a link to it if that if that's possible. We have a way that we can do that, that it, that link can be private to you and then you can watch it and you can't comment on that video, but maybe you can come back and comment on this video and say, yeah, I watched it um, and say how it was for you if you found it useful, that type of thing. Okay, that now I'm sure we're up to like 10 minutes. I'm just going to look here. 14 minutes. Yeah, and I just don't want to split it up and make a, you know, cut this one off and then make video number two the tarot reading. So this is just going to be the tarot reading. And, and this was um, done today, but I was unable to get the camera to work, the computer. I was unable to get anything to work today. It was like Mercury isn't out of retrograde. It was... It was a difficult day until I did the um, world, I set up the world healing field and did the Hathor sound channeling 
and that just cleared everything and after that everything got easy but so we're not I'm not doing the past present and future because I feel like they all exist now so now carries the past now carries the present now carries the future so I'm now calling it what we've been working with and so and then what we are working with what we might be experiencing in the future might be working with in the future so this is this one is um, what we are what we've been working with so that puts it in the past a little bit and um, and I think it's more accurate um, accurate and being impeccable with my words excuse me so um, we got the 15 of trumps and the 15 of trumps is the devil card and um, I like it I like the devil card a lot and I like that you're going to be getting the devil card reading on a Sunday I just think it's great to let's go the, the devil is a little bit of pan so you you want to understand that when I set up a healing field I have the Christ consciousness as one of the beings that holds space for the healing fields that I work with. One of the other beings that holds space for the field that I work with is Pan. <laughs> and and Pan, um, yeah, might talk about him a little bit in this. So first there's, um, there's a, a little quote on, you know, so this is the devil page of the book. And the quote is by Bennett W. Goodspeed. I like the name. And he says, the difference between a comedy and a tragedy is that in a comedy, the characters figure out reality in time to do something about it. <laughs> That's why my gift is comedy. But because I use laughter and comedy to release energetics, it doesn't mean that I'm not from Sirius. Because don't I look like I'm from Sirius? I'm totally, it's a dog star, you know? Okay, so the devil card, Trump 15. So it's a major arcana card. And the devil represents the universal principle of mirth. Oh. I didn't even know he was going to say that. Even though I read it earlier, I didn't remember. Mirth combined with stability. This is the only card in the entire deck which has undergone a transformation within itself. During Greek mythology, the symbol was Pan, half man and half goat. I'm a Capricorn, which is a goat. So, half man, half goat sitting right here mirth maker ah, the god of merriment and sensuality in Egyptian mythology this symbol was Ra who is also in the healing field Thoth and Ra you know that was before I even had this book that was all, all these beings, you know, most of these beings showed up between 2013 and 2015. And many of them, I think, go back as far as the late 70s, early 80s. Okay, so Ra, the sun deity, is a symbol of life force and energy. During the Middle Ages, there was a backlash to the panistic cults and the archetype of the devil was created. <clears throat> the panistic goat, Pan, was changed into the devil and ironically, devil spelled backwards is lived. To me, that's pretty good. 
during the Middle Ages, the panistic activities of people living it up were considered heathenistic. Therefore, in order to quell those activities, they had to be rendered evil, spelled backwards, which is live. They were too lively, so they were evil. Or made wrong in order to make way for new belief systems that were emerging at that time. Possibly Christianity? Could be. The devil pan archetype. And I'm getting really into these archetypes. I think they're powerful. The devil pan archetype represents the need to face whatever we might consider our bedevilments or problems with the tenacity of Capricorn, the goat, or with humor like Pan or Bacchus from Greek mythology. We can face and move through our bedevilments, the webbings on the side of the card, with sure-footedness like Capricorn the goat, and with the mirth and humor of Pan, the smiling goat. The symbol reminds us that if we take our problems or bedevilments too seriously, that they can ensnare us and take us off balance. Don't want that. Especially if you're a mountain goat and you're over the hill you go. The devil pan symbol represents the need to hold on to both the qualities of mirth, stability, and our centeredness in facing real or imagined problems so that we won't be thrown off balance. Doesn't that sound good? Who ever thought that getting the devil card the day before Sunday, which I can't remember if they, you know, some groups say Saturday's the Lord's Day, some say Sunday's the Lord's Day, some, some say that all week is the goddess days. So, you know, you could start Monday, go through Sunday, and those are goddess days. And I think in the new world that we are helping to bring into existence, it's going to be pretty much about the goddess. So, I mean, if you can't hang with a the goddess, then I will suggest to you, um, over, we'll see if her name will come back to me. But in 1996, when I was doing preparation for the um, for the assignment, I didn't know what the assignment was at the time I found out later, but I can say at the time it was to assist Abrahamanad, the new being of the earth, to incarnate. But during that time, I was, um, I w it was suggested that I um, pick a goddess out of the book of goddesses that I happen to have. And... Um, and so I just said, okay, I'm just going to open the book and accept whatever goddess shows up. And I, I'm embarrassed to say, my, I haven't been taking my mushrooms, my memory, memory neurology mushrooms. But um, one of you could probably tell me um, who I'm talking about, but she's the um, creator destroyer goddess. So she basically destroys your life and then helps you recreate it. So one of you can say in the comments section which, which goddess that is. Okay, so currently what we're working with is the um, Five of Cups, and the word there is disappointment. So we'll just flip right on over to the Cups section. And we'll go to the Five of Cups. So the Five of Cups is emotional disappointment. Disappointment makes you feel fragile, breakable, and vulnerable. Like the glass cups represented on this symbol. Disappointment is the state where you experience emotional depression like the murky seas, and anger like the red sky. Disappointment takes us off balance, which is symbolized by the askewed star. It makes us feel uprooted. So there's two things that they're talking about, about taking us off balance. Not having enough mirth can take us off balance. So this 
thing of the devil card or the goat card has to do with proper balance, keeping your footing, um, keeping a sense of humor in spite of everything that's going on. Now this card is talking about balance, which is symbolized by the askewed star and makes us feel uprooted like the lily pads with the falling lotus blossoms. Yet disappointment can be a transformative agent. The roots of the lily pad make the shape of a butterfly, which is a universal symbol for transformation. The astrological aspect of this card is Mars and Scorpio. And for all you Scorpios, you changers. Mars is the planet that is associated with energy, vitality, and assertion. Don't we like that word? Assertion. I like assertive people. I'm, I'm becoming one. <sighs> like Mars, this is disappointment that is deep and vital. This is disappointment that goes to a very deep level like Scorpio. Scorpio is associated with the depths. This is not a superficial disappointment. It can be disappointment that has been experienced within the last five months or disappointment that has been experienced within the last five years or goes back specifically to five years ago or as early as when you were five years old. It's a lot of years of disappointment if you're like 73, that's 68 years of disappointment, which is probably true. It might be interested to take a look at which of your parents was severely disappointed because somehow in the next five weeks or the next five months, you are no longer willing to be the lineage bearer, the legacy bearer of family disappointment patterns. So I'd say the person who carried that pattern of disappointment was my father and my mother. <laughs> Double whammy. Okay. So, you are just going to make a conscious intention to let go of our familial history of disappointment. I'm in. Okay. So, that's what we're working with currently. And then, the card that we get from having done that work of letting go of our disappointment, or the work we may be doing next, um... There's the swords, there's the cups, and wands, then discs. Okay. Swords, cup, wands, disc. So, we get the... Oh, I'm going to show it to you. It's a very pretty card. It's trippy, isn't it? The lighting's not good, but still, it's pretty trippy. And the word is success. We all like success. It's kind of in our nature to like success. Even if we haven't experienced that much of it. But everything's changing. Okay. Six of discs is success, which is a symbol of physical attainment and accomplishment. Astrological aspect of this card is moon and Taurus. Symbol of accomplishment or productivity is Taurus. And deep inner satisfaction is represented by the moon or there is a deep desire at a subconscious level, the moon, to have some very tangible, productive results, which is Taurus. This card contains the formula of success, which is represented by the six planets with the planetary astrological symbols within them. Saturn represents that success is achieved through discipline and step-by-step -step procedures. Jupiter reminds us that success is achieved by being open and flexible to options that we may not have entertained and to opportunities that present themselves. Venus reminds us that success is attainable as a result of following what has heart and meaning in our lives. I'm really feeling this. The moon reflects that success is attainable if we will stay in our authenticity and truth. Impeccable with your word. 
Mercury, the planet of communication, reminds us that success is attainable if we will organize our communication so that context and timing are all aligned. And Mars reminds us that success is attainable if we will put consistent energy into personal and professional issues rather than to expend marathon energy or inconsistent energy into our life situations. I'm going to have to read that one, listen to that one a few times. Okay. Six of disc represents success that comes from deep within and manifests out in the sense of success experienced internally, which is pictured by both the Western and Eastern spiritual symbols that have been conjoined. Here we have the East, Eastern Lotus Blossom that is superimposed on the Western Cross. Both symbols remind us that all our six, outer success is a picture of what we can manifest and create as a result of being motivated from deep within. These two symbols also indicate that success comes from a deep inner ability to integrate and synthesize our experience, which is symbolized by the cross, and to have the ability to open and fold, which allows for success, and which is symbolized by the lotus blossom. Okay, you're going you're gonna to manifest success. That's, that's coming up, six weeks, six months, six minutes, when you're six years old. You're just going to be successful. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be successful whether you're alive or dead. Because if you're dead, then you were successful at getting out of the body. And if you're alive, you're successful at staying in the body. And so it just depends, you know, what, you, what you're hoping for. But we're always successful. We always have an outcome. It's just not always the outcome we're intending. And then we say it was a failure. Well, it's not a failure. It's a successful outcome. It just wasn't necessarily what you wanted. <laughs> so if you want to be a millionaire and you have an empty bank account, it's not a failure. You're very successful at keeping your bank account empty. Maybe having a million dollars would uh, turn you into a creep like many of the creeps we know who have millions and billions of dollars and they're just total creeps. I'm not going to mention names. <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> Probably the same people come into our consciousness. Similar people who just have a lot of money but just appear to be kind of creeps. Now, I don't associate money with creeps. I just associate certain people with money who are creeps. You know, And there's, there's a number of them and I'm not I'm not naming names, not on not on YouTube. I'm not, and I don't have any other channel, so it's my only opportunity. I'm not taking it, but <laughs> maybe the comment section. All right, so that's it. I wanted to do this tonight while the other person in the house was sleeping, and while the cats were sleeping as well. That I thought, okay, I'm going to do this tonight, and that way, I can, you know post it because I already know that everything I've said is okay. I don't have to go and watch it tonight. I want to get back to reading um, Carl Jung's book on man and his symbols. So this has been a pleasure. I've, I've really enjoyed um, enjoyed myself. These are the, these are like the little clips that hold the um, computer to the stand so the computer doesn't slide off and land in my lap or have some damage done. All right, so let's work towards having our inside world and our outside world match. Set that intention and have good feelings about that. And then it just the uh, screen went to um, a scene of Sonoma, which is my, you know, screensaver. It's, a, it's a, vin a vineyard in Sonoma. And uh, I did a whole story on when I was 19 years old, how I moved up to uh, Sonoma County 
to work on top of a mountain on a, working on a startup vineyard and then it just however it was downloaded a new a new program you know and which might be called like sonoma 12 point 12 equals 24 12 equals 48 rolls something like that but anyway it's sonoma and it's just like an aerial view of these vineyards on the top of the mountain where I used to live. It's pretty fun to look at. All right, that's it. I think we, I think this was a long one. And so you're just gonna have to fast forward or something. All right, have a great evening and now let's go.